Good morning. So our previous discussion, we have discussed what is corrosion, types of corrosion, and uh, what does I mean corrosion is broadly classified into dry corrosion and wet corrosion. We have taken example of uh, Taj Mahal and discussed what is dry corrosion. Similarly, we have uh, discussed what is wet corrosion and discussed the electrochemical theory of corrosion also. So I have seen if metal acts as anode, it undergoes corrosion, and metal acts as cathode to be protected from corrosion. Now, wet corrosion is further classified into different types. So, what are those different types? Let us see how wet corrosion is classified and let us discuss one by one in our today's discussion. So, wet corrosion is further classified into differential metal corrosion, differential aeration corrosion and stress corrosion. So, whatever you call it as electrochemical corrosion or wet corrosion, these are further classified as differential metal corrosion, differential aeration corrosion and stress corrosion. Let us see or discuss what is differential metal corrosion, aeration corrosion and stress corrosion one by one. As the name indicates, differential metal corrosion means, so when two different metals are in contact with each other, the metal which lies high in electrochemical series acts as anode and undergo corrosion whereas the metal which lies low in electrochemical series acts as cathode and is unaffected. So if we have two metals, so this is one metal and this is other metal. So this metal will act as anode, so this metal lies higher in electrochemical series and this metal lies low in electrochemical series. So this metal will act as anode and undergoes oxidation. So what the metal which are acting as are undergoing oxidation itself we call it as corrosion. So in corrosion the metal is undergoing oxidation is termed as corrosion okay so the cathodic reaction the metal is acting as cathodes unaffected or it is protected whereas metal which lies low electrochemical series acts as cathode it is unaffected for instance let us consider iron and copper in contact with each other so when iron and copper are in contact with each other metal iron acts as anode and undergoes corrosion whereas the metal acting as copper is protected from corrosion right so why because so you know this electrochemical theory of corrosion what is the cathodic reaction the cathodic reaction is either reduction of h plus or reduction of water the metal acting as cathode is nowhere related i mean it is not at all uh, uh, it will is nowhere related in the reaction it is involved in the reaction so therefore it will not undergo corrosion so in order to prevent differential metal corrosion so the latch the nut and bolt will be made up of same metal Okay, the nut whereas the bolt will be made up of same metal. So if you take the uh, uh, latch, right, so almost all doors will have latches, right. So the latch, in order to fix the latch, the screws also will be made up of same metal. So if the latch is made up of brass, the screws also will be made up of brass. If the latch is made up of steel, the screws also, the fittings also will be made up of steel. If the, uh, the uh, latch is made up of what? Aluminium, the fittings also will be made up of aluminium. So why because if you have a brass latch and if you use stainless steel uh, screws what will happen stainless steel is an alloy right so brass is also alloy so stainless steel contains iron brass contains copper so iron undergoes corrosion whereas uh, right so it will become loose one fine day when you put the latch the latch will come out so similarly for fixing the door handle also so in olden days what used to have uh, before the latch was there or before you had the door lock not to close the door uh, inside you used to have a huge rod like this and a cup shape like this it will come and hold here so this rod iron rod is made up of iron even this cup shape is also made up of iron so both will go and sit each other right so so if this is iron this is iron nothing happened okay so if this is iron this is copper iron undergoes oxidation and will corrode okay so you can observe this differential metal corrosion uh, in a uh, steel screws in a brass or bronze equipment if steel screws are used you can see here in the diagram whichever here so in a copper bolt a steel nut is used the steel nut is undergoing corrosion because steel is iron right so lead and tin solder around a copper wire or a steel pipe connected to a copper plumbing so if you have a steel pipe and it is have a copper plumbing so steel pipe acts as anode whereas copper plumbing acts as cathode so steel pipe corrodes and leakage starts so one fine day the entire pipe will open so you're supposed to use steel ca ca um, uh, plumbing only okay coupling only so next we have differential aeration corrosion 
So what do you mean by differential aeration corrosion? So in differential metal corrosion, two different metals. In differential aeration corrosion, it is single metal. As the name indicates, differential aeration corrosion means different air concentration. So when a single metal is exposed to different oxygen concentration or air concentration, then galvanic cell or oxygen concentration cell will be formed. When a metal, single metal is exposed to different oxygen concentration or retrolyte concentration, so what will happen? A oxygen concentration cell will be formed. So the part of metal which is in contact with lesser oxygen concentration acts as anode, whereas part of metal which is uh, acts as anode undergoes corrosion, whereas part of metal which is in contact with higher oxygen concentration acts as cathode and is protected. Okay, there is a single metal. So the single metal, this is below, this is lesser oxygen concentration. So I have, uh, it is below my uh, fingers, right? So this is lesser oxygen concentration. This is above, or this is part, which is above my fingers in higher oxygen concentration. So the part of metal which is covered by my fingers will act as an undergo corrosion, protecting the other part of metal which is in contact with higher oxygen concentration. So here, this differential aeration corrosion, uh, we have two types. So what are those types? Let us see waterline corrosion and pitting corrosion so differential aeration corrosion are further classified into waterline corrosion and pitting corrosion so what is waterline corrosion what is pipetting corrosion we'll discuss one by one so let us consider example of iron rod which is dipped in water as you see here okay iron rod is dipped in water over here so here the part of metal is inside the water other part of metal is above the water level so part of metal is inside the or which is below water is in contact with lesser oxygen concentration and part of metal which is above water is in contact with higher oxygen concentration. So metal is in contact with lesser oxygen concentration acts as anode and the other part of metal acts as cathode. So part of metal acting as anode undergoes corrosion protecting the other part of metal which is acting as cathode. So here the corrosion starts just beneath the water level okay the corrosion starts just beneath the water level since corrosion starts just beneath the water level it is called as waterline corrosion okay it is called as waterline corrosion so such type of uh, corrosion is observed in ships you can see here this is observed in ships you can it is observed in uh, bridges you can see here so the corrosion will be just below the see water level was up to here see how it is corroded here isn't it it's observed in water tanks so if you are uh, daily filling your water tank, water steel water tanks up to here so just below this what corrosion occurs so above that it will be protected okay so waterline corrosion can be seen in ships waterline corrosion can be seen in water tanks okay oil pipelines water pipelines etc so next uh, let us see the other thing is pitting corrosion so as we have um, air everywhere so what is uh, you know that air is everywhere right air is present everywhere so as air is present everywhere dust is present everywhere so take a small paper uh, sheet of paper or any metal what will happen if you keep for some time small dust particles will settle on the surface you have cleaned it the surface okay so if i keep it aside so within no time there will be small dust particles deposited because the windows are wide open door is open right so the part of metal which is below the dust so i can see here right so below the dust particles or oil or water particles is in contact with lesser oxygen concentration compared to the other part okay so the part of metal is in just below the dust is in contact with lesser oxygen concentration compared to the other part of the metal so the part of metal which is below the dust is in lesser oxygen concentration acts as anode and undergoes corrosion so when it undergoes corrosion it leaves a small hole pin hole and that hole is called as pit it is called as pit so since this type of corrosion leads in formation of a hole which is called as pit it is called as pitting corrosion so once this pit is formed a hole is formed rate of corrosion will be very very high you can see here this is in second diagram see so many holes are formed this is example for your pitting corrosion you might ask 
were quitting corrosion office so almost all production industries so whichever industry you go so you have a, uh, i mean oil will be used grease will be used so they'll dust it so while putting the oil so why oil is used grease is used in order to smooth movement so uh, because of that what will happen it should be oil or this should be applied only one particular part so by mistake it is applied for some other part and it is not cleaned the part of machinery which is below the oil is in contact with lesser oxygen compared to the other part of the metal or machinery so the part of uh, machinery which is below the oil starts undergoing corrosion so in due course if it is not clean what will happen it undergoes corrosion and it forms a small hole once a small hole is formed, rate of corrosion will be very high. That is the reason the machinery should be cleaned in a regular basis. So it should be water or if you are dusting it also, it should be cleaned, dusted properly. If you are dusting only one part, only this is a machinery, if you are cleaning only here, where this entire thing is not clean, then that leads to corrosion. So you can see few machineries, so they will dust. For names, you can dust up today morning, okay, tomorrow I will not dust, that is not reason. If you are dusting, if you are cleaning, clean the entire machinery so otherwise there will be a hot differential aeration corrosion might occur so this occurs mainly in machineries okay there's a small video here which shows uh, how uh, fitting corrosion occurs just have a look at so these all are small pits you can see these pits which are formed on oil pipelines or water pipelines you can see This is because of differential aeration corrosion. So if this continues, it will form a hole. So that hole, what will happen? Either water will leak or oil will leak or whatever that pipeline contains that starts to ooze out from the uh, pipe. So you are supposed to take care that fitting corrosion will not occur. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.